Welcome to News Report number 36 of Zyorian Hyper. We're doing something new today. We're starting off every episode from this point forward with a picture worth viewing. Josh, today we've got Amanda Bynes. She's not looking so good. No, she's one of those, another one of those childhood stars gone kind of wrong, oh, no. unfortunately. No, she was so adorable on all that. Ask Ashley. She even had that show that wasn't Nickelodeon based. That was kind of popular. What was it? Um, I... That's what she said, or Girl Power? What was that show that she did? We're about to. I honestly don't know because I lost Nickelodeon somewhere along it, my childhood it, line. That's so what I, I mean. Not... It wasn't on Nickelodeon. I... Oh, I it was like well, a... I lost cable in general. So... What a girl wants. <laughs> oh wow, she had a lot of. No, she, dude, she had like. Three yeah, no, shows. she was in movies and stuff. Holy she, shit! Look at she her. She got pretty big in her prime. Wow, look at that. She was in all that. She had the Amanda Show. You remember the Amanda show? It wasn't really that good, but I remember it. <laughs> yeah. And then figure it out. She was a panelist on all four seasons. That's nice. That's right. She did the voice of a character on Rugrats. That's nice. And then this show, What I Like About You. That's the one that I was trying to trying to think. 2002 to 2006, she was the main character. Wow, Josh. The last thing she was in, Easy A. I, that movie sucked, man. Damn. <laughs> I didn't see that movie. It either. was not good. It was... Uh, I, I did see... I, didn't she try to sing, too? I feel like she's one of those people yep. who tried to release their own album because well, she was in she, Hairspray. Yeah, so she was in Hairspray. Let's see here. Uh, singles. She had a couple shit shingles. Uh, you Can't Stop the Beat and Without Love, Josh. I'm sure both timeless classics. Uh, yeah, I feel... Yeah, everyone tries to sing. When they get famous. Last last she was on TV was 2011. She was nominated for the MTV Movie Awards for the Best Line from a Movie Award from Easy A. Jesus Christ. <laughs> of all oh, the what? awards. That Whoa. sounds like a terrible award. Yeah. I'm sorry. Oh, what did you win that for? Oh, I had the best line in the movie. I didn't write it. You know, I just said it real well. I just <laughs> said it the best that I could. <laughs> get an award for it. Oh, that's embarrassingly bad. That's that's awful. So poor Amanda, guys. Look, just look at her. Oh God, she's got the the cheek piercings. She's got the like Nicki Minaj hairdo. Oh man, I I just I all I see is Ask Ashley. What happened, Josh? Looks like her and Lindsay Lohan teamed up and they hit the clubs and there was no coming what back. Happened? Yeah, dude. I, they must have hit up a lot of clubs or something. Something went wrong. Something went wrong. Something. What didn't did he do? Oh, the faint went to their heads. Yeah, that would be kind of cool, though. I mean, I, eh, it's one of those things. Eh, they weren't that talented to begin with. If I had that much money, I don't know. If I was Justin Bieber... Hey, let me ask you this, Josh. If you were Justin Bieber, at this point in time, do you think you would be more off track than he is or less off track? I, I have a feeling that if I had that much fame, that much money, and I was that young, I'd probably be pretty insane in the main membrane you know what no, I'm saying? i i think i would do something just like he does where he buys like really sweet cars and then goes too fast especially when you're that young Hell yeah. and he's basically just growing up with it and you have that much money and people are chasing you and hounding you all the time that's what uh, joe rogan was saying on his podcast there's always people complaining about oh justin bieber's smoking weed he's just like oh give me a break i was in more trouble than he was at that age and i wasn't rich if I had that much money, oh, Jesus, I'd be going Yeah, there'd crazy. be trouble. <laughs> yeah, he's just like, hey, he's not that off course. So what? He's doing some drugs. He's he's barebacking some girls. Eh. Who didn't, right? Right? Ask Gene Simmons about that. Yeah, it's one symbols? of those whole things. Because they're an icon, should they act differently? And I don't know. Well, I that's don't true. know. That's true, and especially... And does pre yeah, the trouble he gets in is on a larger scale just because he has more money to get in trouble with. Well, and that's, spend on that's stuff. true. I think part of the difference is, um, like, with people like him, because his fan base is mostly younger people, so he's, like, technically a role model, not just in a person. Like, the difference between him and Joe Rogan is that kids don't listen to Joe Rogan. He's yeah, yeah, an adult some, audience. Yeah. And Bieber's, like, all the little 12-year-olds little getting all wiggly when they see him. Mm-hmm. Nope, that's what I was trying to say. Yeah. He's has more as an influence on young people yeah. and just people in general. It's sad. The Biebs. He he should just become a life coach. A life coach? I I would love to be a life coach. Josh, how do you I, become the guy? I feel I feel like at age whatever he is, like nineteen or I don't know how old he's he is. He's too young to be a life. You coach. Don't, you don't be a yeah. You don't want to be a life coach. I'll be like, here's what you do with your life, and this is coming from me, who's lived nineteen years. <laughs> 
That's like... It's like in that movie, uh, Love Actually, that the one character that's a rock star, and he's just like, Kids, don't do drugs. Or he said, don't buy drugs. Become a rock star and they give them to you for free! <laughs> <laughs> I always loved that line, because it's so true. It's so true. I got Malphite, Josh. I'm going to be a tank. Oh, nice. I'm going to go boom, boom, pow. Um, so we're playing A-Rams again this week. Josh, we need to win one. We, we're we on like a three-week losing streak here. I know our team abandoned us last week, and I was uh, I was very sad to say the least. It's, it's I don't bad know why. news, Bears. I, I, it's it's really not not. Uh, we not didn't even news. have a shot. And that's what I know. Is. I know. We tried so big, and we didn't even have a chance to win. Yep. Um. Wow. Boom boom. You know how do you become a life? I'd like to be. How do you become the guy that goes to like high schools, and you're the guy giving the assembly? You know, you just talk about good stuff. How to be a nice person, how to have some good old fashioned fun, you know. I feel like I don't know. You would get like a degree degree I, I picture it like this. You would get a degree in communications and then somewhere along your life you would have a huge failure, a fallout, oh, yeah. uh, where everything would go bad and then you would come back. <laughs> so are you saying I need to hit rock bottom and then recover before you, people You need to hit rock bottom. Seriously? You get like kicked out your house, live on the live in the parks of New Jersey, South Jersey. Oh. Be raised by like some dogs and they come back. Ooh. Yeah, that's a little more work than I'm prepared to put in. But Everyone loves a comeback, AC. That's true. That's what Everyone they say. does does love a comeback. I don't know. I feel like I could really motivate those kids, man. I could reach them, you know, tell them that that, that high school's not all that matters. That's what they need to tell those high school kids, man. I, I feel like that's what they tell them, like, every movie, except uh, that then they do the exact opposite. It's it's true, though. Like, the problem is, high, like, the, the kids, man, the high school, they think high school's all that matters. They didn't get into honors English, and they're, like, suicidal. It's like, dude, in five years, no one's going to give a shit about your honors English class. Yeah, no one cares about high school. They really don't. I don't even remember what my high school GPA was. Once you go to college, most people, you know, when I was at, at work like a month ago, right, I, I was over, I was fixing somebody's computer and I overheard uh, some secretary talking to someone else about how they got a job application and it had their college GPA on it. And they were talking about how stupid it is that someone put their GPA on. Like, why would you put your GPA? Oh, that's like, they were saying that he was like showboating because I was just like, how fucking stupid can you be? Your GPA is like the number that shows what you got out of college like are you fucking mental i think so mm -hmm. and now it's even shifting is like people are caring less and less about college just because everyone's yes. going to college yeah i guess it's that's like that's true. starting that's starting to happen too it's like there's that millionaire or whatever who has like this competition um it's for like inv inventing something or other but like if you win he'll He'll, like, give you a salary to not go to college, essentially, and just work on whatever you're doing. Oh, I want to do that. And it's basically just to show that, like, you don't have to go to college. And so many pe so many people, I think, yeah, they just released uh, some, like, census data or whatever. And, like, they show that more people are going to college than ever right now. Yep. And that can be seen as a good thing or a really bad thing because of, all, like, all the debt that's coming out of it. And they people aren't just getting jobs. Yeah, I mean, it's probably a good thing macroscopically, but microscopically, I'm not happy about it because every other person that has a degree makes my degree less valuable. Mm -hmm. And that's upsetting, Josh, because I want to be valuable. And they were, yeah, they had statistics. We should have, I didn't bring this up because I'm just remembering it now because I remember for some reason my parents were mentioning all the data of like the worst degrees to get. Oh, yeah, uh, I actually read an article about that. Not that the top 10. I know sociology is up there. Yeah, it's a bunch of these like education jobs where I don't yeah. know. To me, education is one of those really tricky things where I, I kind of don't like that teachers are extremely underpaid, but like at the same time they get really good benefits when they retire and everything, yeah. and that's like a huge thing. And how early they can retire in a lot of states, um, the way the system's set up, I don't know. It's very I have yeah. very. I, I would prefer them work like normal and and make normal money. I don't I don't see I, I don't I don't like the idea of the legacy promises. The well. We'll pay a crap now, but your retirement benefits, they're going to be fucking awesome. I don't i don't like that because people will, t uh, more often than, well, not more often than not, but will get screwed in some shape or another if, if uh, we run, that, run out of money with all those legacy promises. Mm -hmm. We've seen that in big business with bankruptcies and stuff. 
And it's just, it's silly. It, it's just, it's like debt, you know? It, well, it is debt. It's just like, well, we're, it's like taking out a loan against yourself. And it's it's not very forward-thinking, in my opinion. That, that's so 50s, Josh. It's so 50s, but yeah, I don't know. Teach, I think, yeah. The whole way that, ed it's just the way the, like, our education system set up where we go to school for just, like, however many months, I don't even know. And then we have this long summer vacation. Yeah, that's kind of, that, that's another one kind of, of bad. legacy but, like, things that's, like... Is, they like they farming? don't do that in other countries. They go yeah. to school or uh, school like full year round and have, maybe have like one two week break or something like that. Yeah, they just have longer like breaks or whatever for holidays and that kind of stuff to make up for. Is isn't the whole basis of that a a for farmers like they needed to work the fields in the summer? Uh, is that uh, my true? understanding, my understanding is like that. That's why college has some like weird semester schedules to compared to your typical whatever high school. Right. And have you, because yeah, like some colleges, like I know Drexel and Philly has the quartermasters or something like that, mm. where they're like, yeah, there's all the trimesters and quartermasters. Mm -hmm. And it's just a different way of setting up. And I'm pretty sure, yeah, it's based on those seasonality things, um, the jobs that existed and that everyone was doing a long time ago. Right, right. Well, that's. Uh... That's weird. Yeah, I don't know. I, I have a lot of beef with the American education system. I, I think the biggest problem with our Ameri or with our education system is that we, we don't teach people how to learn. We become way too obsessed with standardized testing style of learning where there's X amount of information that you need to know to be considered smart. And as you say, social studies is just a bunch of useless information. And learning that information doesn't teach you how to learn. It doesn't teach you how to think critically. And I, I think a lot of people realize once they start to get into their professional career that the most valuable skill you can have is the ability to learn quickly and effectively. And mm -hmm. I think that's and what I America's think, lacking. I, know, I think they're going to teach us regular skills that you would use. Like I think teaching yeah. people how to do taxes I think yeah. is an extremely important skill that no one – they don't teach you anywhere unless um, you take a, like a class and offered class, by like yeah. a county college or you become an accountant. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's exactly – I mean – Taxes are a good example, but I, I think even a more broad perspective, pers perspectum, perspective um, I, I was going to say broad spectrum, is just finances in general. How to manage your finances, how to you know save money, rec understand how credit card uh, interest racks up and how quickly, you know, if you mm. buy a $100 sweater and make only the minimum payments, that that sweater ends up costing you like, you know, 3x what it would have been if you didn't put it on a credit card and... You know, understanding the simple math behind all that stuff. A lot of people just don't. They just don't get it. They look at a credit card and say, free money. I'm yep. buying. <laughs> I'm buying. <laughs> so I, I, I agree. You know, economics is an elective, and I think it should be a required course in high school for sure. Yeah, definitely. I, I'm in the same boat. Like, I don't, I don't know. I, I kind of like beat down on social studies just because I didn't really like it. Because to me, it was, most, it was more just memorizing everything yeah. and... I couldn't use the information to critically solve any issues yeah. at the time. I, I don't think it's my it's problem. A, it, it, it needs to be there, but in a different capacity. Because right now we have basically like the, the three It's on cores. the same level as math and English. Right, exactly. It's my, it, it, it's my kind of beef. I mean, yeah. you don't need to take it. Like, I didn't take a social studies um, senior year of high school for the exact reason of that. It was just basically writing a bunch of essays about your history. And I think it's, I think it's important to know your history, but to the extent that you have to take it every single year. Yeah, well, um, I, I, it's definitely not as practically useful as English or math. Mm -hmm. And my, my beef with English is I think we need to rejuvenate the, the, the library of books that people are required to read. You know, I understand that the classics are classic for a reason, but we have a lot of books that are like Shakespeare is a good example of it. It's unbelievably just it, it's it is the upper echelon of literature. The problem is it's just written in a different language. It's old English. And. That, for me, like when I was learning Shakespeare in high school, no one ever explained. It wasn't until I got to college that someone actually explained to me, listen, you're not supposed to be able to understand this without looking things up. It, it is literally a different language that you won't understand until you learn how to understand it. And in high school, it was more like, well, just read it. You don't understand it because you're not good in English. And that really turned me off of it. And I think this, like books like The Scarlet Letter, uh, what's that other really old one that you have to read that's really painful? What, the fucking something uh, in the wind? I don't know. There, I know... I know some of them are really funny because yeah. how they're written, uh, shit, so, but it, freshman it, it, year, but yeah. It discourages people like myself that aren't really, I was never, I'm still not a big reader, but I was a really, I was a non-reader when I was a lot younger and in high school, and it just, 
it, it turned me off completely because it was very discouraging. I think it's more important to get people excited about reading, even if people are reading books like Harry Potter or stuff that's not as uh, uh, dense in terms of literature. Just getting young people in the habit of reading, developing the, the mental prowess to use your imagination instead of staring at a screen is so much more important than trying to micromanage the, uh, like, oh, this isn't... This isn't good enough. This is Harry Potter. It's about sorcerers. It's not about real problems like adultery and Puritans and whatever else happens in the Scarlet Letter. I don't even know because mm -hmm. I didn't fucking read it. Yeah, I don't know. That is one of the books that uh, I didn't like. I still don't like reading that much. I oh, me thinks. Oh, really? Uh, me thinks. That's not a word. That's not a word anymore, man. <laughs> oh, me thinks this is going to go well. Really? Me thinks you're fucking retarded, Esther Prynne. How about those apples? Oh, no, he got me. Yeah, dude, Varus is, like, OP in this shit. What the hell? Oh, anyone who has poke in this game is OP, dude. and that's the reason why we're losing kind of hard, is because we have no poke. We have me, and... We got uh, Syndra. Yeah, that's about it. But they have a lot more between... I think... I don't even look at their team, because I'm trying to buy something right now before I have to run back in the battle and die. So yeah, I, I I'm glad we're on the same page because that, that's that's my big big disappointment. I, my apparently I was talking to my sister yesterday and I guess she visited our high school and she said it, it's as she put it not so uh, n not so empathetically it's like an internment camp now. Um, I guess she means they've gotten a lot more strict about uh, sort of nonsensical rules. But yep, I don't know. Oh, I, yeah, I mean, with yeah. with all technology, I don't know. You kind of. All these rules are coming out basically just on a whim. Yeah, because they're trying to micromanage cell phones and stuff. At uh, my high school, they I, when I was in seventh grade is when my school decided they wanted people to start wearing um, ID badges, like the little just laminated, basically like a little license. And it was uh, they, they gave up on it. They don't they don't make you wear. It. Now you just have to have it. They, for a while, it was you had to wear it on a lanyard around your neck. Obviously, no one did that except for the middle schoolers who were too afraid to say fuck you to the teachers. Um, and then uh, they got to the well. You could just clip it on your belt, but it has to be visible. And then, of course, nobody. What I, I always just kept it in my pocket. I found that happy medium of where teachers would never send me to the office for not having it if I had it in my pocket, but I would still get yelled at for not having it. It was like that happy medium, you know. Of they didn't like it, but it wasn't bad enough for them to actually punish me. And apparently, everybody did that. And now, I've, maybe I started a trend, Josh, because now uh, you just have to have it on your purse. You don't have to wear it anymore. Exactly what I fucking did in high school. Boom. Zayori <laughs> time. I should I should be given the assemblies, man. I'm telling you. The assemblies. Oh I'll, I'll, I'll get up on that on that fucking auditorium stage and be like, hey, hey, you know why you don't have to wear those IDs around your neck anymore? This motherfucker right here. And then they'd be like, all right, that's the end of this assembly, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Sir, we do not allow profanity in our high school. I, I never understood why they're so uptight about profanity in high school. It, it always seemed weird to me. It's just like, you know, you gotta recognize that people our age are, like, exposed to cursing. Like, it's just, it seemed weird to me that mm -hmm. they were, re like, really serious about, if you say, like, damn, they're just like, oh, god, that's a... That's a that's a suspension or that's a, a detention. That's what it is when you stay after school. It just it, it never made sense to me. Why are you guys so upset about this? Yeah, I'm trying to think how strict they were on that. I mean, you couldn't say fuck. I know. The older you got, the less strict it became. I remember yeah, they, less, my, they cared less and less. In about my senior it. year, AP. I mean, like yeah, class. if you're like a little like toddler and like yeah. second grade, and you say it, yeah, yeah that's really bad. I remember I, I, I <laughs> said getting yelled at in class, and the teacher didn't say anything. Because one of the he gave us an assignment, and one of the whiny girls is just like, "Oh, we don't have time to do this. You don't understand how busy our schedules are." And I just looked at her straight up and said, "Who are you trying to bullshit? Like this isn't really that hard. It doesn't really take that much time." And she just didn't say anything, and the teacher just laughed. And I was like, "Fuck yeah! I just said bullshit. I'm a badass." That's exactly what happened, Josh. That's a true story right there. Oh crap! Work. Yeah, I just I just fucked that Soraka. Yeah, I'm. S I don't have my ult. Oh. Yo, know, run near him. You have that Sunfire cape, right? This Vars is, like, making our days miserable. Oh, yeah, I do have a Sunfire cape. You're right. Uh... No! Oh, my God. He's probably going to kill me. Yeah, I died. I tried to run in and poke him, but I'm not very good with this hero. And he's pretty strong right now. Dude, he is so good in this. It's insane. It really is insane. I don't know how to build this character too. Rumble. I never play. <laughs> I never did my rumble practice. Oh no, rumble, rumble, grundle. 
So Josh, let's talk about a little bit of uh, news here. Uh, what do we got? Oh yeah, here's a big one. Yahoo! Yahoo! They bought Tumblr! 1.1 billion! I know, I talk about big money. Let's be, Josh. Holy fuck! I didn't big know Tumblr monies. was that awesome. So that's like the big thing. It's one of those sites that like isn't generating that much money. But they have uh, a lot of people using it. From what I read a while, because Tumblr actually got um, when I was when I was an undergrad, they they got a financing round. I believe it was Tumblr, and that that was what was so interesting about it. It was something really big. It was like three hundred million, two hundred million. I think we may have talked about it. Um, and the the whole point of that financing round was for them to figure out how they're going to start making money. And in an article I read, apparently they're in like the top twenty most traffic websites in the world might even be top 15 but uh tumblr gets an absurd amount of tra way more than i thought because i knew tumblr was a big site but not a mm -hmm. um you know i mean top 20 in the world of traffic is yeah yeah no i i, I knew it was that popular between all the blogs they have yeah. it was he, one of the most like he, traveled sites here's some, on the web. some stats for you they get about 300 million monthly unique visitors 120,000 signups every day 900 posts a second and 24 mm -hmm. billion minutes spent on that site every month. Oh. Jesus Christ, dude. That is an insane amount of traffic. Mm. That's, that's insanity right there. So, um, yeah. But yeah, it's bottom. one of those things where they have all that traffic, but they don't have the money. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they're not yeah. making the money off all that. Yeah, their, their valuation is, is all based on potential to make money, getting all those eyes. So, I guess this is Yahoo's attempt to catch up, because as, as you've been talking about, you've been blogging, and you use Blogger, which is owned by Google, right? Mm -hmm. And yep. that's totally integrated into Google+. Plus. It basically, you type it up, and Google does everything else for you to get it out there and put it in a... In, SEO yeah, you, or much. you can use all of Google's uh, utilities essentially to get it out there. Yeah. Right. So, uh, yeah, that's that's pretty cool. I guess I guess Yahoo didn't have any sort of blog before, but I feel everything Yahoo does, they're like the opposite of, of innovators. They just like see what Google does, and then they try and go, oh wow, we should probably buy a blog site. What do you guys think Tumblr's worth? A couple bill? All right, let's do it. You know, like that. Yeah. That's the way I picture the uh, the meetings going in the Yahoo office. Well, I think that's how it goes and like all these big companies. Like, you always see Google, Apple, or someone else buying a new company like every other week. It's like they're acquiring this or acquiring that and it's to just get more data, get more users, and I should be in here killing people with you guys. Yeah, I, I wouldn't think but, his talent's going But yeah, down. I like, think that's one of the things that big companies, when you have that much money, to facilitate growth. You just acquire something that has growth. Yeah. I guess that's true. That, that's a, a oh, Boris. Screw you, man. Ah, I should have, I should have probably. Run. I should have turned around too. I don't know why I did that. That was a death sentence going into Boris. He's so p. Christ. He's got um, 14 of their 27 kills. But yeah, and, and I think the other day actually, I didn't put this in the news either. But uh, their Yahoo is looking to acquire Hulu possibly. Really? Um, I think they're in a bidding war with someone, is the last thing I saw before I went to it. Yeah, I think I saw this in the news last night. Hulu's not public, is it? They're not public, no. I wonder how much Hulu brings in and how much they're worth. Mm hmm. It's one of those things where, like, I, I told you about this a long time ago, and it's kind of why we bought into Zynga. It's because, like, the whole landscape of the tech industry looked like you're going to have these major players, the Yahoo, the Microsoft, and the Google, and Apple. And they're all going to start cannibalizing each other, mm -hmm. and all these little companies just to like get growth and get and to get users. And that's why we, that's why I thought yeah, uh, Zynga might get bought out by someone like Yahoo or something. And I said a long time ago that Yahoo, I think to you that Yahoo is going to start acquiring stuff because they have a lot of money, but right. they're not on the same level at all, and they need to start buying those companies to just get more people essentially. Yeah. Yeah, the, the cannibalization is, is definitely a true phenomenon that we've seen. Oh, Jesus. If only I had my ult, that would have been a perfect time to use it. Oh, God. Oh, God. I I don't have an ult still. This is this would be such an ideal time. Oh, my God, I killed something. Run away. Run away, C. We're going to live. I, hit, I got the health. Oh, no. Keep running. No, you didn't need to do that. You should have told me you were going to do I it. I turned. I turned. I did it. Look, we made it happen. Finish him. No! God you damn, told Soraka. Me, see, I would have turned around with you. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know you are going to ult. I, it, it just come up on cooldown. I didn't know I was going to do it either. 
Damn that Soraka. Oh my god, that Varus would have been dead. I fucking... I, I thought we were running away, so I would have charged in flames blazing, because that's what I do. Blazing. Yeah, alright, my bad. I got gully. But yeah, Yahoo is actually trying to... I, I, think this, I think this is a good thing. I kind of don't agree with the valuation, but it's a good move for Yahoo, because... They need to do something to like mix it up because they are kind of just, just cruising no. right now and losing everything. Oh, what is this guy doing? He's making our lives easier. Thanks, bro. Thank you. Thanks for the gift. I accept your offering. Soraka silenced me. Little does she know I don't have an ult. Oh, oh shit, the tower's up. Yeah, don't overcommit. <laughs> don't overcommit. No, Syndra, you're overcommitting. I thought that tower was down for a second. No, dude, we haven't done shit. We're we're in bad shape. <laughs> yeah, no, that, I thought we had at least taken our tower since we were at Rax. Dude, we we barely even touched it. It's like embarrassing. There you go. That's that's some. I see you poking. I see you poking. Yeah, I'm trying to poke. I do a little damage now. A little you, damage here and there. Know, I should have gotten uh, frozen heart just for the cooldown reduction instead of ran going for randomness. Silly. Syndra, what are you what are you doing? What do you think? I don't know. Thing is, they have a lot of poke in their team, like a lot. Yeah. And we have like me, and uh, Sindri who's dead. Yeah. It'll be interesting to see what happens in Yahoo, though. I I don't know. It's I I still I I, w I would like to know. Uh, I guess we could probably look it up, like how much money Yahoo has. Like they gotta be, like, like you were saying. I don't know, like I agree with the idea, but I don't know if I necessarily agree with the actual number for that valuation. Um, I'm sort of in a on the same boat as you. Are we turning this, Josh? I think we just did, and this guy's going hard. Oh shit, let's get out of here. Peace. Get out. Oh, Morty! Morty's yeah, coming. Fight. Morty's gonna, like, tree you up, because he does a lot of damage to people with lots of health. Oh, but Vi's doing it! Dude, I don't know if we really want to do this. I only turned because yeah, Vi turned. Like, I don't like it either, but uh, we're going for Wait, it. We're fucking him. We're f oh, no, we're getting fucked. Oh, oh Jesus. Yeah, we're, we're, I'm dead. <laughs> I'm out. I'm running. Oh, God, Sindra's here. I'm going back in. Oh, uh, Sindra's here. <laughs> Wait, did, did they kill Morty? Ooh. Oh, shit. It worked. Now that's yeah, what I call a victory. I was actually watching uh, what they said on the news because actually uh, Marissa, who's the CEO and the CEO of uh, Tumblr, actually were on CNBC talking, and I actually missed it. But I called the highlights, and they said they asked them. They asked the uh, CEO of Tumblr at the time. Mm -hmm. He says it's a new get rich quick scheme, developing a site that's ad free. Just attracting a lot of people and then selling it to some bigger company and let them handle how to monetize it. Now that is an interesting thought. Yeah. So you Josh, that's what split. you do. Make an ad-free site, get a whole bunch of people that are like, oh, this is awesome, this is awesome, and then dump it. Yeah, it's basically sell to someone and say, here, we got you a lot of people, you make the money. Here, you do the hard part, son. Oh god, I just, I didn't even get to do anything. So yeah, that was a pretty interesting ask, uh, view, like just to view the whole scheme of how these, like, oh, no. a lot of these companies are being sold. Just like uh, Instagram was sold for a billion dollars, and I know it lost three hundred million of its valuation in like the first uh, month or whatever, yeah. because uh, Facebook filed in taxes or whatever, because it claim as the giant deduction. Right. Josh, let's talk about three D printing food. NASA is hungry. Yeah. What's going on with this? One of the coolest things. There's actually a YouTube video that we should look at since it looks like we're going to die pretty soon. But it's actually an example of um, a three a three printer printing food. <laughs> so what what do you load it with? Because like uh, normal three D printers, you you put plastic in. So what's the like resource used for this? It's basically a bunch of sugars and uh, carbohydrates, I believe. Is um, it's in the article and I. I don't want to mess up these names, but it's basically complex sugars and carbohydrates because that's basically what makes up the majority of food right now. Nice. And so I, we can show we can show the YouTube video after this. But there is, yeah, there's actually a video of it and pictures of this 3D printer. I, I don't I think it looks like it's printing like a salting with jelly on it. Oh, OK. And, yeah, I saw the I see the picture. Oh, uh, but yeah, that could be the future of uh, printing food. And yeah, NASA is inter interested in it because Getting like what you'd want as far as food-wise is always a big problem in space where you're limited. In space, yeah, that's. Uh, I, I saw an article about cold fusion the other day that seemed promising. 
Oh, really? Yeah, I don't remember any of the details, though. Cold Fusion. I think they used that. What did they use that again for? Um... I don't know, something about, like, when you get stuff down close to absolute zero, like, you, you can get really close to making, um, like, a perpetual motion device where, like, energy in, energy out is almost equal. Yeah, because um, when you have absolute zero, your resistance on wires, or your, whatever, time is zero, because you lose uh -oh. zero energy loss. That and that's why, that's why you operate computers, the supercomputer is at near absolute zero. Right. It's because yeah. you, you have the... Uh, transmission of data is at the speed of light yeah there you go that's that that would be the the gist of it so that that was interesting we just lost though thanks to fucking varus that stupid bastard oh too much poke it's, oh. sometimes it's the luck of the trouble to getting those poke heroes yeah or dude. be rolling to get poke heroes it was semi even but he just like his damage output is insane he's like he had more range than anybody else soraka is just like hey you want some more mana Whoa. Yep, they just had a better team comp than us. I didn't really... Uh, our team comp wasn't bad, but we had no poke, and we had no ADC. That's the big thing, too. Oh, yeah. Wow. Evelyn oh, was wow. not very good. Evelyn yep. was by far a weak link. Look at the, look at the uh, death difference there. The only one in the double digits. Holy crap. Yeah, I didn't know she was that. I should have gotten barrier, too. I screwed up. Barrier? I can't even get barrier. I think um, I'm still stuck on heal or run fast. I never ran fast once. God, I hate that the phone is in my office. <laughs> hmm. I'm actually trying to figure, find it right now because it was one of the most popular things on YouTube. And now I'm trying to find the video that I was looking at. And I see the picture. I, you're right. It is like a saltine with some jelly. Ooh. But well, yeah, that could not... help curb the uh, uh, world hunger issue. So, well, all right. While you're looking for that, let's also talk about Xbox One. We should at least um, uh, mention it, I suppose, even though neither of us are big console gamers. Um, wow. Xbox One. The name is kind of what got me, Josh. What the fuck? I, I know. I was kind of... In the same way, where like you just had the 360, now you have the one. So you had regular old Xbox, then you went to 360, then you went to one. What's the next one going to be? Xbox Two? It's X like are they going to jump to Xbox Four? I don't know. I, I liked what somebody said. Just make it Xbox Infinity, and then what do you make the next one? I don't know. I don't know how you want Infinity. Infinity. Infinity, to infinity two. Infinity and beyond. Infinity. <laughs> <laughs> infinity and beyond. I I don't know. I, I liked Infinity though. Or Xbox Extreme, Xbox, dude, they could have done 720 and then 1080, boom, there you go, there's your next two generations. I don't know. So, but apparently it's going to have an 8-core processor, 8 gigs of RAM, a Blu-ray player, a 500 gig hard drive, 3 USB 3s, and Wi-Fi. Oh, baby, oh, baby, oh, baby, oh, baby. Um... Yeah, let's see here. I like this article, Six Things You Don't Know About Xbox One. It won't be streaming video. No TV DVR for you. It was meant to blend in, and we talked about the new design. That's what it looks like, uh, and it looks like, I don't know. They, they wanted to make it more, more flesh with real entertainment things and less like, oh, let's play Game Boy. And I just think it looks boring. I don't know. It looks like a PlayStation with an Xbox logo on it. See, yeah, Josh, I thought they're going to. I, I, oh, you're uh, lagging. They were going to incorporate more TV stuff because. Uh, oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that that is the thing. Integrating TV. Yeah, with I guess. It. I guess my internet's. It, yeah, because they have like a deal with ESPN. I'm pretty sure. Uh, okay. Oh yeah, all those sports games. All those sport, just sports games and showing, uh, just watching sports. Because I think, I think. At E3, they're going to release a bunch more information, and they were mentioning something on how you can watch sports and like play a sports game or update a sports app or something along those lines. They're going to release the information about that kind of stuff. I see. Um, at E3, so it's not a price I don't yet. I see. I, I like this one right here. The infamous Red Ring of Death is no more. Now when your Xbox 360 breaks, it'll give you a message on the screen instead of just the power button turning red. So... 
they didn't fix your Xbox dying, but um, now it'll tell you when you turn it on instead of just not turning on. So, you know. You know. That's that's pretty awesome. And apparently here it says something. Uh, ga- they're, they're going like all DLC style now. Buying the games in, a, in Best Buy or GameStop is sort of a thing of the past. Um, it says all games will be saved directly to your hard drive, which is kind of interesting as well. I don't know if that's good or bad. That it's, it's just different. It gets rid of that era of just like, hey, Josh, you coming over? Yeah, bring bring Halo. We'll play it on my Xbox. Now it's like I have to go over to your house to play your Xbox, which is probably more profitable since you. It's sort of like books. How with eBooks you can't. You know, I have this book here. It's like, Josh, this book was awesome. I'd love to let you read it, and you can come over and pick it up. But if it's an eBook, what am I going to give you my e-reader? I think not. Same kind of a thing. So it's it's just send the PDF. But yeah, I know I know that's a big thing because Amazon Amazon actually patented a um, a system to exchange ebooks online or something like through that. They somehow got the rights to it, and so the big thing is reselling. The big thing is reselling electronic data that right. you technically downloaded, and that when your book or whatever e read disappears, or if you die, you like disappears or whatever with your accounts. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because that's like the big thing with streaming now. You just like you get Netflix or whatever. You can watch all these movies, but when you're done, all the movies are gone, and you don't have anything. Ah, uh, right. Yeah, that was the same thing with Napster. Like, I mean, it's kind of funny because Napster did a very similar model back back way back when when Napster went legit after the big lawsuit, and um, that's basically what they did. They had their their catalog of music, and you paid a monthly subscription of like seven bucks. And you could stream the music and listen to it, but as soon as you cut the service, you don't have access to it anymore. You don't own any of it. And when that first started, nobody liked it because it was like, well, I don't own any of it. I can just download it, and then it's mine forever, and I can put it on whatever device I want. And if I decide I want to stop paying the subscription, I I don't get boned. And now that's like the most popular model across the board for kind of entertainment stuff. People are, are rocking out to the... Netflix model, if if you will, it's kind of interesting how Napster was like ahead of, ahead of its time. Josh, mm-hmm. they were forced to do it, and the pricing Justin might Timberland. not have been right. Yeah, but well, yeah, true. they were basically forced. That I mean that's the legal way, is what basically came down to. Yeah, you're right. It, it may have been a, a price matching issue. That's certainly a good a good point here. But yeah, that's basically legally how you do a bunch of stuff. Like Apple, Google just released, or they said they're going to do their music uh, subscription program, and they beat Apple to it or whatever. And Apple, the big thing is the copyrights, basically the rights to all the songs. I know Apple and Sony are having issues right now, and that's why Apple does not have yeah. uh, streaming music at the moment. Right. And, well, and part of the issue is the copyright holders have learned that they can really charge whatever they want because it's it's they have a mini monopoly on their product. There's no there's no there, there's no counterpart. It's just if you want this song, you have to pay this. You don't like it, then fine, don't buy it. Mm-hmm. And know. there's yeah, there's this big issue with having like a lot of songs. I know Pandora was facing it where like if you have like so many songs but people Mm-hmm. They actually want people to listen to their songs last or whatever, and they, that's why they put the cap on how many uh, songs you can listen to in a month or something like that. Right. I know Pandora issued that, and it's because if you listen to it too, if you just listen to it too much, the ads don't balance out how much money they actually spend on the rights. Right, right. All right, let's check out this 3D printing video here. Um, it's short. Hopefully, this doesn't flag us for copyright issues. Let's check it out, Josh. So does it say? I, I didn't even look at the description. Does it say what it's making? It's it looks like a cra- It's a kind of a low quality video. It's a cracker of sorts. Yeah, it's, I think it's chocolate and it's in the comments, but then the comments turned into Dutch and I can't read them. <laughs> so that's that's pretty sick. It really is just a printer. Wow. The crazy Dutch, dude. I wonder mm-hmm. how the shit tastes. That's what I'm wondering, too. How would it actually taste? Would it be, like, fresh? Or would it be, I don't know, one of those sugar-free chocolates? But the, <laughs> the machine sounds kind of like a modem from the 90s. Oh, yeah. It sounds kind of like a 56K modem. Wow. Well, that's that's really fascinating here. Let's see. It took 1.5 years to make that... Um, uh, bu- 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 
Wow. That is pretty, pretty fucking neat, man. That's that's the future right there, folks. The future. Except it won't look anything like that when I finally release it. Oh. Or will it? Or will it? Yeah. Oh, boy. Yeah, I had one of those moments, like, last week where I was I was watching Bill Maher and he was talking about 3D the 3D printed gun that we were talking about you know the the liberator, the liberator. and you know he's totally like weird about guns and the way he was talking about it I was just like you know man you know you you're really clueless the way he was talking about it he was just like they they kept going on and on about how you could take it anywhere I'm like it has a metal piece in it dude and you still can't get it through a metal detector if it is in fireable condition uh, mm-hmm. And they like kept, I don't know. And then I was I was listening to Bill Burr's podcast, and he had a there was a question that someone wrote in about like he was dating this girl, and then when they were about to do it, she told him he found out that she was really a transsexual, and like he was going on and on about it, but he was so clueless, and I was just like, oh my god, man, you sound like such a fucking moron right now. And I was I was like, is that what we sound like when we talk about stuff that we don't fully understand? You know, I yeah. hope not, because I was getting really frustrated listening to those. Di- I just wanted to, like, write in and be like, dude, you're a fucking moron. Type it into Google. Arr! Like, it just. Oh, I mean, like, I don't understand a lot. Like, f- I have a full grasp on a lot of the topics that we. I, like, I all either. the details of the Tumblr and Yahoo deal and everything, and how that compares to uh, everyone, like, selling their company, like, Instagram. Yeah, someone in yeah, chat you know, says you know the big numbers and everything. Big numbers. That's what, someone in chat says now we they we can three D print an assault rifle. Dude, this this has got to be bullshit. This video is from five months ago. It says a three D printed AR fifteen six shots before breaking. I, I don't believe that. The Liberator was the first gun that was able to fire with a true three D printer. I thought yeah, I under, I thought that was the first one. Uh, yeah, no, nah, this this video is it's. It's either fake or it doesn't meet the requirements for that competition we were talking about. Mm-hmm. Or else we would have heard about it. Or else yeah, no one would I give thought, a shit about the Liberator. I mean, yeah, because everyone's like, this is the world first or whatever. They yeah. had it on everything. And, and yeah, so I don't know. I know there's competition. I know people are working to try to do this kind of stuff. You know what's really it's, weird? It's possible someone did it and was like, okay, no one else is going to have this. I'm just going to make my own 3D printable guns and yeah, you guys it's... can all go to hell. I guess. I, I don't know. The, uh, and of course, this like YouTube video has absolutely nothing in the comments of like... Cody 3D printed... All right, all right, so I, I'm, I'm following somebody in chat here. Coded, Cody 3D printed guns. Type it into Google. It's for real. He's the leader of the 3D movement. I mean, is this the guy that made the Liberator? Hi. I don't know. I don't know. I, they, I, this is exactly what I've been what I'm talking about. We're fucking clueless here. I don't know who made it. I just knew it was upload. I don't know. Took it I down mean, three days in. Yeah. Look right here. This is. And it looks like noisy cricket. Let's see here. Here's a picture of a plastic assault rifle. But yeah, the, the big thing is it still requires a piece of metal. It still mm-hmm. requires that one platinum piece or whatever that breaks. This is a use. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to research this because I, I I'm not sure whether I can call fact or crap here. Fact or crap? Fact or crap? Yeah. So look, here's a picture of Cody with the Liberator. I I, I swear to God, there there's no way that they made a fire like world first hand fire or the first ever hand firing of world's first printed gun. There there's just no way that that was 3D printed guns documentary. Here's a guy with a. So I, I mean, you can print parts for the AR with plastic, but you can't make like 99 percent of it with plastic. I think that might be the difference here. I know you can make certain parts, but yeah, and I know they're working on three printing the actual gun part. Yeah, um, it has a serial number and everything on guns. Yeah, but the difference... like I said, I'm not. Ex- I'm extremely good. Yeah, with guns the difference with the Liberator I'll, I'll though is it's 100 percent plastic made with a MakerBot printer that's twenty five hundred dollars, except for the one metal piece that you is like absolutely required to. You need the metal projectile. 
That's the only, so like that might be the, the difference. I, I don't know. I'll have to Google, we'll have to Google it and get back to you guys because I'm pretty sure Liberator was world first IRL feat of strength. IRL feat of strength. Fuck yeah, man. <laughs> well, that was a bummer, Josh. I'm sad we lost. Let, let's, uh, let's wrap up the, the news report VOD for this week and then we will play another and see if we can Gotta win. win. So Josh, closing words, remarks. It was a man have a, week. Have a good weekend. Extend a weekend Memorial Day on Monday. Markets are closed. Oh, I'm shit. Happy. Monday. Steak day. I got to do something on Monday. Good day for some day drinking. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Day what we drinking. We're doing America on our holidays. Let's go out and play wiffle ball. Get a keg or something. Oh, what was that? Slosh ball Slosh or whatever? Ball. Do we know anybody who's having a barbecue or a party? I'd love to, I'd love to go hit a keg. I haven't drank I'm... out of a keg in a while. I may be going to my uncle's because it's his big 50th birthday. So well, that's all. Maybe but I'll maybe I'll put out a calling on we'll Craigslist. See. Anybody want to have a kegger? Your house. <laughs> Your house. <laughs> Uh, all right well yeah in that case guys happy memorial day give all your vets the best because it's their day it's their day not yours join us next week guys news report 9 a.m saturday mornings eastern standard time we usually start late but that's okay follow at zayori tv social media and you'll know what's good and when see ya